Okay, welcome to the weekly charting analysis webinar with Jasper Lawler at CMC Markets. We've got the risk warning on the screen. We'll have a quick go through that. Any questions at any time, please send them through the, the chat or the Q&A windows in the webinar program. And I'll answer them as soon as I see them, really. Just get rid of that. Bit of F11 to give us some full screen. Well, fresh week. It was an interesting one last week. It was a good one for stock markets. Um, finished off for, with a little bit of difficulty from the uh, U.S. non-farm payrolls report. I hope all of you were successful with your trading in around that. Um, there was a, just a just a quickly recap. Let's maybe have a look at uh, dollar yen. <clears throat> so basically, what's happened? I don't know if this is the best example. It probably isn't actually. But um, um, was this it? Fourth? Yeah, probably not actually the greatest example to look at. Dollar yen's been range bound. <clears throat> but basically, what happened is we had an initial spike. Uh, uh, yeah, one at one o'clock. So yeah, that that'd be it. We had an initial spike higher. On uh, on the data, um, just because the headline jobs number was 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 better, but then we dropped down in the dollar uh, pretty quickly afterwards, just because the uh, monthly earnings data showed a showed a decline when a small increase was expected. That was basically a sort of offset a little bit, a, a big jump that we saw in January, um, which I think the explanation goes that it was largely because of an increase in minimum wages that kicked in at the start of the calendar year. Still wages looking a little bit soft, and so that raises the question whether the Fed is in any, uh, you know, uh, has any sort of ability to, to raise rates uh, this month. <clears throat> It's not the Fed we're really thinking about this week necessarily. Obviously, they're always in the back of mind, but it's more the um, European Central Bank. That's the, the big event of the week comes in on Thursday. Now, we heard last week that um, – I'll pull up the Germany 30 chart for this because I think it illustrates quite well. In and around midweek, we heard that um, there was some indecision from the ECB about whether they could, uh, you know, about doing anything more than just cutting the deposit rate. So it seems like a cut in the deposit rate is fairly well expected now. So that would probably take us to minus 0.5% on the deposit rate. So that's what we'd be expecting to be announced at 12.30 on Thursday GMT. And then come the press conference, that's when there's uh, apparently uh, uh, not so much consensus on what else can be done. And so I think probably not unrelated is that even though we've seen oil prices push a fair bit higher, European markets pretty much flatlined since then. And, uh, and you can see that on this Germany, uh, Germany 30 chart, basically run into these peaks from um, from January. So not managed to take out those peaks yet. Um, not a big sharp sell-off yet. There could be, um, but at the moment, I think people sort of holding their breath to see if the ECB can come up with the goods. So that that would be the question mark. Um, you know, what extra can they do? Um, Mark is looking for more than just a rate cut. They can't really extend the timeline again. I mean, they've already done that once. It's already gone from a 12-month program to an 18-month program. So, you know, obviously what everyone's really looking for is for them just to increase the monthly amount of purchases um, from 60 billion euros to maybe 70, 80, 90 billion. But there's some debate as to how many, you know, how many bonds there are actually out there for the ECB to actually buy it. So they may have to resort to extending into other um, into other areas. Uh, the most extreme would be exchange traded funds or just outright shares um, as the, the Bank of Japan has been doing. Needless to say, if the European Central Bank started indicating they were going to buy exchange traded funds or shares, that would be positive for stock markets. Probably a pretty outside chance that's going to happen, but still hard to see how else they'd be able to do much more in the way of monthly purchases because the market's just not as big. 
Now, while we're in this topic, let's have a quick look at the um, the euro. So, a bit of a messy chart, to be honest. Um, you know, all good if you're trading short term, because we had quite a, a good uh, downtrend there. But it's hard to find a kind of general context for it. We did pretty much stop at the bottom of this prior range. Uh, you know, somewhere in the uh, you know just past the close. Closing levels here, where the the rally kicked off. So we kind of did the rally, um, and then just dropped back again. Um, so the price that we are at the moment, funnily enough, is almost precisely where we finished uh, the ECB meeting um, when uh, there was a massive disappointment in December. So we've kind of chopped around, gone sideways, pushed up higher, come straight, but that come down, overshot a bit to the bottom of the range. Now we're right, right there again. So this was the big 300 pip move, the December meeting, and here we are, um, back pretty much at that point. So we're, you know, we've we've been finding a little bit of resistance at the 200 DMA. We're still positive from the perspective of a higher high and, and higher lows being put in. But the market looking a bit, you know, a bit soft and a bit sideways, really. Um, so you can see that the euro has, has pushed higher in the last couple of days, um, maybe re partly reflecting not only a bit of dollar weakness, obviously, from, from the non-farm payrolls, but that was just a Friday effect. There has been a bit of dollar weakness in general, but also just that maybe the ECB um, are not going to come up with the goods. Uh, you know, if they did come up with a big easing package, that would generally be negative for the euro. Um, if they come up with something a bit more disappointing, that's positive for the euro. <clears throat> so that's kind of the, the lead up for the week there. More, uh, more generally in stock markets, um, Note today, if we just have a look at the, uh, the UK 100, note today in a tweet that the um, FTSE 350 mining index was up 28%, so the mining shares, um, a basket of those are up 28% this year. The FTSE um, is down just over 1% this year. So we've had a good bounce back from the lows. It was a lot worse than 1% for sure. So we're almost back to kind of break even on the year for the, for the FTSE 100, and obviously the UK 100 is our proxy for that. So we had that false breakout lower, and we've pushed up. We've taken out this high here, which is certainly a positive, but we haven't managed to make much ground above. And so in these kind of choppy markets, the risk is we basically look at another this situation, but reversed. We've had a breakdown doesn't go anywhere and just goes back. Here's what we could be dealing with here. Break up, chop, 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 doesn't go anywhere, back into the range again. That that seems like a good, distinct possibility to me. We have pushed out of the the, um, the 57 area on the RSI, so that was a, that's a positive development. But um, really, I think that, you know, the kind of line in the sand probably is just, Here's where we ideally would have wanted to bounce off that second day. If we just continued high from there, that would have been good, but we haven't managed to. Probably, given that we haven't managed to bounce immediately from these peaks, I would suggest we're probably heading down to the lows. And these lows really here, these, these need to hold in my mind to, to continue this decent amount of momentum that we've been having. If they don't, you know, then, well, that's pretty much us back into the range with a false breakout here. Shorter term, on the shorter term chart, this looks a bit like a little double top taking place. And obviously, as the chart says, bearing in mind we are below the downslipping 200 DMA. So we've been led higher by the likes of the mining stocks, which have been the most beaten up over the last 18 months. So that's the risk there, when you see that, is that it's a short covering rally. So the company, it's not the good companies doing well, as you want to see in a healthy market, it's the bad companies bouncing back as people scramble out of their short positions. Now, Generally, um, something I put in the chart forum, actually, um, I think U.S. markets could be kind of leading the um, the way here because there's some pretty fairly cut, uh, well-defined resistance. Now, this is the small cap uh, proxy for the Russell 2000. You can here see here on the RSI, massively overbought, nearly at the 80 level, rolling off a bit. 
um, as of today at least. You know, obviously we're not closed, so you can't read too much into that, but at the moment we're down a bit today and we're banging right into this um, this potential resistance area here. And we have managed to push through it a bit so far, that's encouraging. Uh, but obviously p looking pretty overextended here. So not so much that you want to go aggressively short, but it's, it's definitely a, um, a risk area. And if you have been long for a while, you, you know, you want to have a bit of a heads up in this area that uh, it's, it's a potential for a drop. If we do comfortably fly through here, then I would just naturally say that these, um, this previous peak here, where we sort of um, held up for a little bit and then did the massive drop. That would be an area that a few people will have positions and want to square them off. <laughs> Having gone long here and then uh, and got back a few and break even. So uh, this slightly um, uh, you know less looked at chart, the broader U.S. markets. But if we zoom in a bit to the top 500 companies, you see something pretty similar. Um, so we had this double bottom, we broke out, uh, but now we've run into this kind of selection of lows here. And um, a bit of reversal that took place on, on Friday on our candlesticks. And obviously it's right at the 2000 mark, so, um, and uh, just short of the 200 day moving average. So we could get a little push up to the 200 day, um, but this is looking a bit uncertain here, right into our resistance area. So. Um, you know, it's under, it's under the 200-day moving average. It's after a prolonged move higher, um, and it's into an area of resistance. Fibonacci, I think we're through most of the areas, but let's just see. Maybe from the highs, we're at a 61.8, um, just for a little extra a bit of confirmation. Well, look at that. Yeah, there we are. We're pretty much at the 61.8% fib of this whole decline from these peaks in um, in November. So a confluence of resistance here. Um, you're going against the short-term trend if you're if you're if you are going short, but um, still a few few reasons to think this is a bit of a bit of a troubled area. Mm. Um, if you get a close below Friday's low, that would be a little bit of extra confirmation, I think, that we've put in some sort of interim interim top. If you're looking for a bit of kind of cross asset confirmation here, look at this red across the equity markets, but here green in oil. So oil's higher. It had a good day on Friday as well. Yet we're um, we're not looking so hot in the, in um, the stock market. So not that normal positive catalyst that you get from a higher oil price, not seeing it help stocks today. So you know maybe again another reason to think we're at a bit of a tipping point. Um, if we're switching over to FX, then um, <clears throat> uh, we've got a few events going on. We've already touched on the ECB. Um, we've got German industrial production tomorrow. Uh, we've got uh, Carney speaking tomorrow and Eurozone GDP tomorrow. So uh, a few events centered around the Euro. Let's put up the Euro pound because um, that's um, kind of an interesting one at the moment because we had this um, triple bottom. The objective was um, 7980. We didn't quite get there, and we had pretty sharp reversal away from the 200-day moving average. Now we could push up to that objective again, but I think this is a good one for the benefit of hindsight for anyone who was taking a breakout of these peaks here, which worked out pretty nicely. With what are we talking about here? Well, close to the um, the full target of one, two, three, four hundred and fifty pips from that breakout. I think when you're planning your trade, and you see the 200-day moving average there, and it has capped rallies. There, you know, the last time that they were um, last time that it was tested, and you have um, your objective pretty much 50 pips above the 200 day moving average and we you you know you've made 400 you know you'd be eyeing up a target of 450 versus 500 and with the benefit of hindsight this is one of those examples where you'd think um 
actually better to, to TP a little bit earlier here at the 200 day just in case it causes some resistance ahead of my price target. So this is a good example where it, it has in fact happened. And I think a bit of extra evidence suggests that we have seen a bit of a, uh, a top here, is that we had that big reversal, we came back, and then we pushed it and made a new new high, touched the 200 day, and rolled off sharply from there. So we have tried to break higher again. We've we've got here once. We've tried to push higher and haven't done so. Uh, I'm on a weekly chart here, a bit hard to see, but if I drop down to like a four hour, here you can pretty much see the kind of double top where that was the first peak, and then we pushed up 200 day, he was here, 200 um, week, moving average, sorry, was here. I think I was saying day before, apologies for that, I meant week, um, and then we rolled away. So pretty much a double top. We're holding above the neckline at the moment, but again, um, if, that, if we drop through that close from last week, uh, no, not really. Yeah, I suppose last week. Yeah, if we drop through last week's low, um, it's looking fairly bearish on the uh, the euro band, and we're obviously um, coming off a kind of failure swing here on the uh, the RSI overbought. So, pound has been uh, the euro. You know, the euro has been. Um, doing very well against the pound, the pound's been sliding, but the pound actually has had a pretty decent run of form recently. The pound looking actually a bit overboard against some pairs, um, but here maybe a bit of a turnaround about to take place. Now we do have UK manufacturing production on Wednesday. Um, and the UK trade balance on Friday, which is not normally such a massive one, um, but we've obviously had this big slide in the pound. Um, that's not going to be great for the trade balance. Mm -hmm. um, as far as China data, um, no direct impact as far as FX, but we do have China CPI, PPI Thursday. And on over the next weekend, we've got China industrial production. And I haven't seen it on the calendar, but I assume retail sales, they normally come together. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, let's have a look at sterling itself. So, bit of um, you know, we alluded to this in the last webinar. I think the um, the bullish RSI divergence here off the low, and we've got a good rally off that so far. But seem to be suffering a bit. There's 42.30, uh, which if we pull out, I think it requires a monthly chart. Yeah, is the um, the lows from um, 2010 which is obviously what we took out in February. We bounced back in uh, in March, but we're sort of, um, you know, that would be an obvious uh, multi-year uh, kind of area of potential support and resistance here. So pretty much on the, on the dot, 4230, we're getting, we're, we're rolling away from. So obviously the opportunity was at 4230 itself, uh, but if we get a lower close today, particularly below the open from Friday, a little bit of confirmation maybe that uh, we've seen a bit of a um, little bit of a top. And obviously bearing in mind that um, the weekly chart shows us that we're on lower lows and lower highs, and we're below the 200-day moving average, so kind of in line with the trend as well. Euro, we did look at, didn't we, for the sakes of the ECB? Yeah, fairly, fairly kind of messy chart. Let's not look at that again. Dollar yen is um, an interesting one. We've double bottomed. Oh no, I'm on a very short-term chart here, but we've, we've double bottomed, but we've not taken out the neckline. The neckline would take us to about 118.70. Should we break above uh, one, basically 115? Uh, we've got that big 116 resistance in the way. You could easily get a kind of false break through 115, fail at 116 and drop again. So be aware of that area, but um, but something in the lines of 118.70 on the cards should we get a push through 116 as well. At the moment, not seeing much demand. It's faltering at 114. If you look at uh, if you ignore the spikes, you look at the closes, barely getting any closes through 114 here. And um, the um, dollar yen obviously matches up fairly well with um, with equities, and 
if you if you think about that um, the S&P 500 and things, we had that double bottom and then a push right. S&P 500 rise, we're probably up here. Dollar yen not even broken out higher from that previous peak um, in February. Mm -hmm. Now, we've had a few back and forths over the oil market, um, but it, uh, we finally broke out pretty big time last week. This is Brent. So we're on a daily chart here. The big one was that we pushed through the 35, 36 area. That was a good breakout last week. Now we've just run into the, the previous peak from, from January. So above there, we're the highest, uh, I think, well, as of today, we're actually, according to our cash prices, we're at, you know we're the highest we've been all year. So a bit of a turnaround in the oil price, um, looking a bit overextended, but that's not necessarily a reason to think prices can't go further. Um, one thing to perhaps be a bit concerned is we've got a bit of a confluence of uh, resistance here. Um, yes, I've messed around in terms of which which high. I've um, chosen to use, I haven't used this tie because, frankly, it doesn't line up as nicely. Um, this was kind of a choppy range bound. It was here when we bounced up and then failed to get back up to the top of the range again when the downtrend really kind of kicked in. So I've used that, and it does just work out nicely with these peaks here. The 50% retracement is right where we're at at the moment. The 61.8%, if we do manage to push through these these peaks, sits right in line with that, uh, the August low, um, which, you know, held us up a couple of times before we dropped off. Mm. So I think um, it's, it's fairly clear-cut within the, sort of the main levels in oil at the moment. It's, it's that breakout of 36. That's the kind of support beneath us. It was resistance. Now it's support on the downside. A um, bit nearer term is maybe where we broke out on Friday, um, these peaks here around 37. And if we get higher through this level, it's it's the um, the 4170 really, I guess, is where the 61.8 is, and then just a bit above that is it's really just 42, which is the um, the low from August. And we'll finish on a high with one of the best performing, best looking charts at the moment. If I can just uh, get this webinar thing to drop away, so I can actually click. Yeah, why are you doing that? F11U. All right. Yep, let's have a look at gold. So, hope you spotted this one on, um, on uh, when was it, Thursday that we broke out? Yeah, um, there's a pretty clear cut triangle pattern here. This is a daily chart, better seen on the four hour chart. Look at this, just the lows lined up beautifully. Highs lined up beautifully, and then just got a breakout on the four hour or the hourly would have been the best ones to catch it on. Uh, but even on the day, we got a pullback to the 1250. So even on even if you'd wait for the daily close, um, if you you know buying buying at the end of the close, yeah, it's always a risky one, and we haven't followed through that much yet. Uh, but if you'd wait for a pullback to the 1250, then you'd had a nice entry point. And we're pushing higher again today. So the objective, I need to scroll the chart down a bit, um, based on the height of this triangle, which is obviously a pretty wide one, should actually take us to 1325. So immediate support would be the 1250 that's already held. And if we're above there, then good chances, I think, we can get up to this 1325, which um, um, does take us pretty much underneath that 200, um, 200 week moving average and kind of somewhere in line with this, um, this peak from back in July. But I think it's hard to argue that we've, we've, turned, a bit of a a uh, we've turned a bit of a corner in gold, um, but I think the risk is that, you know, the way it swings around is that we've had a big uplift. How much further does it really have to go? Um, especially while equities are looking quite buoyant. It's been going up with shares, 
which shows that it's not entirely just a sort of anti-shares trade at the moment. It's a general sense of, of risk aversion and, and um, mistrust in the, in the rally in, in stocks. Um, people are buying gold, uh, almost like a hedge. Um, either just, no, I don't believe this rally at all, I'm just buying gold, or just sort of, well, I am buying some shares, but um, I'm going to buy gold in case things fall apart again. Okay, I think um, let's leave it at that. Not in the specific questions through, so thanks very much for attending. Good luck with the trading this week. Just Lawler signing out.